live in a highly technological world, a world of touchscreen computers, a world of touchscreen cell phones, and we live in a new school type of world. We are connected to people all over the world through the use of the internet. We live in a new school type of world. We can let all of our friends and family members, all of our associates, anyone who knows us, know what we are doing at this very moment through sites like Facebook and Twitter. We live in a new school type of world. We have high definition televisions that hang on our wall and, and, and home theater systems that make movie theaters envious. We live in a new school type of world. Gone are the days of Walkmans and now we have iPods. We live in a new school type of world. We've gone from 78s to 45s to 33s to 8-tracks to cassette tapes to CDs to MP3s. We live in a new school type of world. We've gone from betas to VHSs. Now we have DVDs and now we have Blu-ray. We live in a new school type of world. We are living in a fast-paced, highly technological, new school type of world. Times have indeed changed. We can see the changing times even here in worship. A uh, long time ago we wouldn't have had screens like this. We wouldn't have had cameramen. But this is the norm now for times have changed. We live in a new school type of world. There was a time when our education system operated differently, but times have changed for we live in a new school type of world. There was a time when our government operated a little bit more efficiently, but times have changed. We live in a new school type of world. There was a time when our community was a little bit more close-knit, but times have changed for we live in a new school type of world. There was a time when kids could run up and down the street, have a good time, and you wouldn't have to worry about them. You knew they were safe, but times have indeed changed. We live in a new school type of world. There was a time when family, the family unit, had a more prominent place in society. But now society seems to celebrate the individual more so than the family. Times have changed. But we live in a new school type of world. There was a time when our great God Almighty was talked about and, and taught more diligently and more boldly. But now because we are afraid we might offend some, we don't talk about him the way we used to talk about him. Times have changed. For we live in a new school type of world. In the past year, we've heard a lot about the concept of change from many different arenas. Change, change itself really is inevitable. Change happens even when we are not even trying. See, some of you, when you walked in, you, you were feeling pretty good, but in a few minutes, you will be asleep. Change is inevitable. See, some of you, when you walked in, you, you, you had a full stomach, but in a few minutes, you will be thinking about what you will eat as soon as you leave here. Change, your body is changing. Change is inevitable. See, change for the sake of change isn't always good. See, change really shouldn't, in my opinion, shouldn't even be the end goal, but the end goal should be progression. We should want to progress, and change is a part of progressing, but you can change without progressing at all. And see, when you're not progressing, you stand the chance of regressing, going back into some old ways, going back into some bad habits, going back into some things that aren't really good for you. If we've changed but we haven't progressed, we will soon regress. Instead of going forward, what's really happened is we've really gone backwards. 
And many of our problems, whether it be in our school, many of our problems, whether it be in our homes, many of our problems, whether it be in our Christian lives, might be able to tra be traced back to a regression in our lives instead of a progression in our desire to fit into a new school culture. We've lost some key old school principles, especially one very important one. We're going to look at that very important old school principle in a lesson that I like to call an old school lesson for a new school world. An old school lesson for a new school world. There is a lesson that Jesus himself tried to teach, and it's one of those lessons that really is timeless. And if we are going to progress in our Christian lives, if our families are going to move forward and not regress, if we are going to go to the next level in our Christianity, in our spirituality, then we are going to have to take a hold of this old school lesson and use it here in this new school world. We can't allow this culture that we live in to shape us. But see, we've been put here to be the shapers of this particular culture. We must live by this old school lesson here in this new school world. In Mark chapter 12, verse number 28, one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus had just finished dealing with the religious sects of the, the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See, the Pharisees had tried to trick him with his own words by asking him a question uh, about the payment of taxes. And here is where Jesus gives his famous quotation, render to Caesar those things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. The Sadducees then brought him into a discussion about the resurrection of which they did not believe. And Jesus answered them in such a way that they could not say anything more. But that leads us to the scribe whom Matthew calls a lawyer. The scribe hearing all of what is going on, the scribe decides to come to Jesus and ask Jesus this one very important question. And I want you to pay attention with how Jesus answers this particular scribe. He says, what's the first commandment of all. What is the first or great commandment in the law? In the law, Jesus, which is the commandment that carries the most weight? In the law of Moses, if we fail